Uh, oh, look, I mean, I think you're right as well about that youth factor because he brings something uh, different to the table. Uh, I've got to say, Josh, it's interesting because it hasn't always been smooth sailing for J.D. Vance and Trump. He once called him America's Hitler, but here is J.D. Vance admitting that he was wrong about the former president. I didn't think he was going to be a good president, Brett. He was a great president, and it's one of the reasons why I'm working so hard to make sure he gets a second term. I think you should. When, you, when you're wrong about something, you should change your mind and be honest with people about that fact. Josh, is J.D. Vance a bit of a, a, a secret weapon, almost, because he's about to convert more people like he had to himself? Yeah, you know, I find that very relatable because it's very similar to my own trajectory. So back in 2016, in the Republican presidential primary, I was just graduating law school at the time. I was a very outspoken supporter at the time of Senator Ted Cruz's presidential campaign. And I actually got a shout out in his, in his Iowa caucus's victory speech. I was very active in the Ted Cruz campaign. And I also had a very harsh language for, for Donald Trump at that time. I don't, I don't think I literally called him America's Hitler. But there were many of us who were caught, of, who were caught up in the moment. It was a very important presidential primary. Is a very important election in 2016. And like J.D. Vance and like so many others, I have been won over. Donald Trump had a very successful four years as president. Did he make mistakes? Sure. I would not have handled COVID-19 and lockdowns and, and vaccines, for instance, the exact same way that he did. But by and large, he was an extraordinarily successful president. The world was very stable. It was peaceful. There were no major wars at that time. The economy was thriving. The black unemployment rate here in America reached, the, reached its absolute lowest number in the entire history of that statistic. The economy was roaring. The stock market was soaring. I could go on and on here. So at, at this point, I mean, who cares? Really, seriously, who cares what you said eight years ago? It matters whether or not you are a passionate supporter of the president's agenda right now. And J.D. Vance clearly is that. I absolutely, completely agree. I mean, it's, it's what matters now that counts for sure. Now, look, let's talk about the ridiculous and inflammatory rhetoric we've seen from Joe Biden and the Democrats that led to the attempt on Trump's life. Donald Trump is a genuine threat to this nation. He's a threat to our freedom. He's a threat to our democracy. He's literally a threat for everything America stands for. They fan the flames of political violence that are a threat to our personal rights. Most importantly, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, Trump is a threat to this nation. And as we know, Biden also told donors we're done talking about the debate. It's time to put Trump in a bullseye. But here is Joe Biden overnight having very public hallucinations, denying he engaged in such insightful rhetoric. Have you taken a step back and done a little soul searching on things that you may have said that could incite uh, people who are not balanced? Well, I, I don't think, look, how do you talk about the threat to democracy, which is real, when a president says things like he says? Do you just not say anything because it may incite somebody? Look, I, 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 I've, I have not engaged in that rhetoric. Now, my, my, my opponent is engaged in that rhetoric. He talks about to be a bloodbath if he loses, talking about how he's going to forgive all the, uh, uh, actually, I guess, suspend the sentences of all those who were arrested and sentenced to go to jail because of what happened to the Capitol. Yeah, Josh, the Biden gaslighting continues. Yeah, it really does. And look, one thing that I think it's worth focusing on there, you know, they've used this this bloodbath talking point now over and over again. They're saying that Donald Trump is threatening a bloodbath. They're trying to portray this this offhand comment as as possibly foreshadowing a second January 6th, you know, a nefarious insurrection if Republicans retake over. That's that comment was made in a very specific context where he was talking about the fact that the auto industry in Detroit, Michigan might face a bloodbath. If the Biden administration's feckless policies when it comes to EVs, electric vehicles in China and Mexico are not reversed when he is president. So, you know, they, they've taken this very, very minor comment and they have disingenuously gaslit the American people into the into the next coming of Hitler or Mussolini. It's disgusting stuff. Absolutely disgusting. But Joe Biden has 
absolutely positively been just as guilty as MSNBC, as Rachel Maddow, as Joy Reid, as any of the far left commentators here in America. He has been personally just as guilty as any of them when it comes to taking this rhetoric and taking it 10,000 degrees hotter and more fiery than it should be. But unfortunately, this is not an isolated phenomenon. The left has a very long and sordid history in America of, 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 of taking talking points and then inciting violence run. Unfortunately, this is just the latest and starkest example but these people joe biden in his oval office address sunday evening here in america if if they are calling for unity and for us to take down the temperature do us all a favor and look in the freaking mirror because if you are not willing to at least do that modest of a step then just shut up and go home Oh, well, you're spot on because, uh, I mean, here are the comments from the White House today. Are they going to stop the inflammatory remarks? The view is that Trump and the MAGA Republican agenda is a threat to democracy. So how do you get that message across while bringing the temperature down? How is that phrasing going to be replaced? Is it going to be replaced? Well, look, what I can say is this. We have our differences, and it's okay to have our differences. And it is okay to speak to someone's record, to speak to someone's character. Josh, uh, Corinne Jean-Pierre, they're basically confirming that all the Democrats have is the hateful rhetoric up their sleeves. Well, you know what's funny is that de Democrats are actually starting to concede out in the open that they do not think that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. And the reason that I know that is because you have more and more Democrats, both in the commentator class and the chattering class, as well as the elected official class, who are now just saying that they're fully expecting a Trump win. They know what's happening at this point. I, to be clear, I mean, I, I, the Democrats have a lot of tricks up their sleeves. I don't, I don't like the, this talk that, that it's all over. We'll see. But, but he is looking good. Donald Trump's obviously looking good. And you've now seen some op-eds like Jared Golden, a centrist Democrat from Maine who published an op-ed a couple weeks ago saying Donald Trump's going to win the election, and that is okay. And you've actually had an increasingly, no, an increasingly large number of Democrats actually now say this because they have to run away from Joe Biden on the campaign trail because because he's so catastrophically unpopular. But you can't have it both ways. If you are okay with Donald Trump winning an election, then by definition, he is not an existential threat to democracy. You literally just cannot possibly have this both ways. So uh, look, there, there actually is one movement in America right now that is something of an existential threat to democracy. It is the street thugs and hooligans of the far left. It is the idiots who are out there the day after the inauguration in 2017 under the guise of the so-called Women's March that were vandalizing property and were smashing windows and looting back in Washington, D.C. in 2017. These are the Black Lives Matter and Tifa radicals that cost billions and billions of dollars of property damage and untold other number of heinous offenses during the St. George Floyd summer of love in 2020. And then these are the same pro hamas Moss people since October 7th that are burning down America's university campuses. So there actually is one movement in America that is a massive, massive existential threat, dare I say, to democracy. It is not Donald Trump. It is not MAGA. It is not America first. It is actually the street thugs of the far left. Yeah, I completely agree with you.